Hello and welcome back to Foos Entertainment for my next review which would be for A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 The Dream Warriors Well I would say that uh This has been uh, definitely held as the best Nightmare on Elm Street sequel from the original films. I would have to agree, but I would also have to disagree. I would say that Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 is probably the, the movie that really introduces Freddy the way he, we know Freddy. Um, they went with a look that makes Robert England kind of pop more out with the makeup. In the first two movies, he really um, was very darkly lit. Um, the makeup was so different from his actual face that there really wasn't a whole lot of Robert England in the makeup, although he was there. But then this... Um, installment, you can actually see more of Robert England's actual face and characteristics within the makeup. So this is the first film to kind of do that. So this is the first film that made um, Freddy more comedic, have um, his one-liners, like, you know, the very famous line, Walk in the prime time, bitch! <laughs> Sorry, I can actually do Freddy's voice. If you guys probably know this from the last Freddy review. <clears throat> and um, there's just so much interesting stuff. Now, what's interesting about his voice, um, people probably didn't notice this in the first two films, but it really is um, kind of talked about in interviews Robert did for this movie. His voice is more like this. Walk in the prime time, bitch! But yet, they lower it down. Let's see if I can do that right here. Probably can. Let's just see. Sound effects. Yeah. Walk in the prime time, bitch! So, you see how that... See how that kind of changes my voice a bit? To where it has uh, more of an electronic voice and effect to it. Not that I don't already have that. But um, that's kind of an idea about what they did with his voice. That, but that's just, just me trying to make a point um, right there on that. They actually will alter Kate um, Roberts' voice from having more of a high-pitched, more crazy, manic performance and actually put it through bass and um, sympathizer effects to make it sound a bit different but you can't really get that a whole lot from um, the first two films this one you do um, but yeah definitely have um, a lot of gems that make Freddy Freddy they kind of come into play in this one um, like for instance how he um, Toys with your fears and toys with um, with what scares you and your strengths and uses them against you, um, so on and so on. <clears throat> Gets played with quite a bit from this movie and from this movie on in the in the film series. So uh, that's that's kind of something they do, and that actually is kind of cool. The characters get are you know, a lot more interesting from in this movie than in the previous two. So this really is um, the definition of what really, where Nightmare on Elm Street film series really starts to take its ground and starts to really become what we perceive as a Freddy Krueger movie. So I would say that, but is this the best of Nightmare on Elm Street films? To most, yes. To me, no. Now I'll get to that when I get to my favorite one. 
I actually have some interesting favorites in this film series that people will actually find. Um, well, what's wrong with this guy? Why is it like that one? So much. Well, wait until I get to review the later films, now we'll definitely let you know then. But, um, that's how I look at that. <clears throat> and, uh, Let's go into the premise of the film now. Taking place, I would say, roughly... Well, if this regards Nightmare on Street Part 2, Freeze Revenge, let's just act like that didn't even exist. But I'll put a timeline on it. I would say at least a good 10 years after the events of Nightmare on Street Part 1. Nancy Thompson has become a um, psychiatric hospital type of uh, counselor who helps uh, troubled teenagers. So she comes to um, a clinic known, known as Weston Hills when a uh, new tragic case, Christian, who has been haunted by Freddy, finds her, finds her way into this clinic after being committed by her mom, after having episodes suicide episode to be more precise and basically uh, basically we find that the place is full of spring um, Springwood survivors you have all survived encounters from Freddy and this is actually a sleep clinic for children that have problems sleeping and suffer from sleep disorders. And within this hospital, and within Western Hills, Freddy is attempting to kill all of them in finishing his work of killing what we perceive as the Elm Street children. Nancy knowing this, becomes our hero of the movie, and the leader of our um, other heroes, which are the last of the, Elm, the, last of the Elm Street children, all of our characters in this movie. And um, they try their hardest to battle it out with Freddy, and each discover they actually have powers. Within the dream world, they actually have powers that they can battle it off with Freddy. Like one um, is the Cess of Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons and has um, within his dreamlike state wizard like powers. One used to be a um, heroin addict and meth, a meth addict. Um, he was a bit of a, of a punk rocker um, badass with knives and mohawk. You have. Uh, one who has superhuman strength. That's a bit of a Hulk because he's obsessed with being tough. You have one that's a mute um, per, um, teenager who actually has the ability to speak in his dreams. And his and his, his um, voice is supersonic and can and can break and shatter glass, as well as um, battle out with Freddy and hurt him. Christian has the ability to bring people in and out of dreams and to share dreams as well as to uh, do gymnastics in her um, dream world and, and have uh, interesting abilities like that. In the end, um, in the end, we also find out that um, well, actually, as a, actually, while that is happening, um, the other main character, um, Dr. Nero, no, Gordon, Gordon um, I forget the actor's name, he plays him, but you guys might recognize him from um, Body Devil, which is a underrated movie. Um, he um, keeps coming across this nun who keeps haunting him, and we find out that 
she has the key and the answer to stopping Freddy, and that is to find his remains, his real physical remains that were never buried in real life when the um, parents killed him. And uh, she says, bury him in hollowed ground. And so he goes on a mission to do that. And while he's burying him in, in hollow ground, our, our main hero has to die. Freddy gets his revenge on Nancy by pretty much getting her and killing her. So, but in her last breath, she does try to take Freddy down with her. Just tells you, and it was a very sad moment for everybody who was a fan of these movies at this point in time, when the hero dies. It's pretty tragic when you watch it in the, in the movie. You kind of feel for it, even after all these years, when you see Nancy Thompson actually die and give her life to save these children. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the premise of the, of the movie. You know, yeah, uh, something else is, is um, introduced in this movie is the dream um, suppressant drug Hypnosil, which will not come up again until um, Freddy vs. Jason. It's another one of his mistakes that it made. Like I said, that one I've had to upload directly to YouTube from my hard drive because I'll probably be making like a good 45 minute review on that movie because there's so many mistakes. Having Western Hills in this mistake, having 428 Elm Street in this mistake, um, having the stream, stream, um, suppressant drug hypnosil in the movie is a mistake, having Jason being afraid of water is a mistake, having Freddy being afraid of fire is a mistake. So many mistakes in that movie, it would take a long time to get through them all. But uh, yeah, that drug is introduced. And, uh,. That's the premise of the film. Now, audio and video quality. Unfortunately for this one, this one doesn't have much to offer over the DVD. Um, the picture is better, I would say. It, it actually does have a bit of an HD picture, but it's not that significantly that much of an improvement. It's an improvement, yes, but it's not like a humongous improvement. But that's kind of the way it is with Nightmare on Elm Street set. It's an improvement, and I do enjoy the quality of the movies. But this one just kind of feels like they um, just upgraded it to HD. And the same thing, and the same thing can be said about the audio as well. Let's keep on the picture real quick. Uh, this one is completely warm, no, warm um, color temperature. There's not really anything in terms of cool temps. There's a little neutrality in it. So it's not, not like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, sorry, um, it's not like um, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, to where everything is warm. Even daytime stuff is warm. Um, the daytime stuff in this movie is neutral, but everything else in the movie is very warm, color temperatured, so it's just a very dark movie. As for the audio, this one has neutral ground on DTS HT 5.1 audio. Um, there's not really much intensity, but there is, there's a lot of good effects and uh, a lot of good direction, yes, but it's not like intensified, like the next Nightmare on Street movie we review will be. And that one will be very intensified because it's the first one that actually has an original Audi that had a Dolby Surround stereo source track in theaters. This one was receiving a mono sound just like the first two. But it's certainly not a bad movie overall in the quality. Um, well, that was pretty much my review on A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, The Dream Warriors. And oh yeah, just a little nod. This also features um, a very popular, more hair metal song that I actually um, have gotten a lot of credibility on the channel for doing a live performance of it and shocking the hell out of everybody with people really coming to the question in their mind of does Foose actually have limitations on his range that he can actually sing? Well, for all people that know me for being a vocal artist, 
I will answer that question right now. <clears throat> I don't know. Whenever I find myself coming to a, uh, a song that is difficult, I just try to get better at it, and then eventually it's easy. And that was kind of the case with um, Dream Warriors from Dokken. Uh, I used to not be so great at it once upon a time, but then I got really good at it. And now I can sing that song like it's nothing. So, I'm limited and then I'm not. <laughs> so, in re reality, I don't know, really, if I actually have limitations on my vocal range. Because I'm not sure if I do. Uh, but everybody always does have some sort of limitations, so maybe I do. I just haven't found it yet. But that, that uh, very high-pitched hair metal song, Dream Warriors, is not one of them. I can sing that just fine. In some ways, I might even be able to sing it higher than John Duncan can. Back in the day when he could sing like that. Um, well, if you guys want to check that out, go to the, to the um, Foos playlist and type in Dream Warriors. Or just go to the channel and type in Dream Warriors um, Karaoke. Or Duncan Dream Warriors Karaoke, um, and you'll probably find it. And then you can watch it, see what you, and then see what you think. Um, well, that's pretty much it. Um, I will see you guys next time for my review on Friday the 13th, Part 7. Well, actually, I think we're told, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to check this out, because um, as far as I can remember, I am pretty sure that um, <clears throat> Nightmare 4 was not released in the fall. I know that Nightmare 3 was, but um, I'm not quite sure if Nightmare 4 was released in the fall. It might have been released in the summer. But it might have been released in August. So if it was, it was released in August, then yes, Friday 13, Part 7, and New Blood is next to be reviewed. But if it wasn't, then um, it was released in, like, say, May or April, then it would be reviewed first. Because I do know that Friday 13, Part 7, and the New Blood was released in June. So it really depends on what which film was released first. But well, whichever one is coming up next, um, within the next day. I'm also going to be reviewing, um, within that time period as well, the, the um, remakes of The Hills Have Eyes, so parts one and two, from 20th Century Fox Spotlight Pictures. Um, well, until then, I will see you guys. I uh, hope you guys are having a good weekend. Till then. <laughs>